Welcome to Retro PC Gamers Hardware Corner with Teffin from Teffin's Tech. On this episode today, we're going to be talking about one thing. And what's that one thing you might ask? Well, it's low density RAM. And why is that important? And where is that important or when? Well, we'll start off by opening up this package that I've not opened yet and just came in the mail. What might this be? Now, before we show you what's inside, we do have to mention that this episode has been sponsored by Funnel Bear. Funnel Bear is a funny bear that wears a funnel upon his head, drinks honey from it uh, occasionally, uh, but most often uses it to extract the honey from the hives of the bees. Thank you very much, Funnel Bear, for sponsoring this episode. Well, what is that we have here? Some memory modules. And not just any memory modules, but these are low density DDR3. 1333 megahertz RAM or memory, whichever you prefer. So let's open these up. As you can see from the first view, well, I, I mean, this doesn't look any different from any other RAM I've seen or DDR3 RAM I've seen. So, Tuffin, what, uh, what is the deal with this RAM and what makes it special? Well, let's take a look. That's one side, and there's the other side. So, that just that's probably the front and that's probably the back but nonetheless um you're like well i've seen ram with memory chips on both sides before once again what makes this special well let's take a look shall we this is a four gigabyte stick and it has one two three four five six seven eight sixteen memory modules or er, um chips so anyways Here's how these work. 256 times 4, 1 gigabyte. 2 gigs, 3 gigs, 4. Well, what about the one that you have inside the computer? Let's take a look at it, shall we? Same. It also has memory on each side. However, this is a 2 gigabyte stick. Well, so how does that work? Well, it still has 4 banks of 4. Yes, but instead of 256 in each chip, these are 128. So, as you see, with um, the issue being here is that the motherboard here is an LGA775, and the processor is a Q8400. So, back in the older times, which might not feel like as older of a time to some of you, like myself, um, but nonetheless, I regress, the um, situation is that these uh, required a low-density uh, type of RAM like this, uh, for it to be operational back then and they weren't compatible with uh, higher density RAM modules and any RAM or memory modules that had chips with 512 and higher uh, 256 was the limit back then so what is the issue with this is that most DDR3 RAM these days um, pretty much most of all of it is done in high density of uh, usually just memory on one side of the RAM chip and easily like a 4 gig stick would just be what you'd see here except these would be 512 each so you'd still have, say, 8 going across, but each would be 512, and there would be none on the back side. So the problem is, is that's fairly hard these days, um, especially on new egg or Amazon stuff, to actually find any memory that's low density like this, and not to be confused with the low voltage, which is what you'll probably find in your search results trying to find low density RAM. So, um, yeah, it's not low voltage DDR3, it's the same regular voltage, but it's low density. So um, I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, I found this stuff over on eBay, and we're going to test it out, see if it works. It's just you know, your standard uh, system OEM RAM, no special heat sinks or anything, unfortunately, but um, you know me, I'm a computer modder, and this is a system of mine, the uh, hashtag woodwork bench. It's um, designed to be all black. It was my first computer case I made out of all, uh, mainly all wood, and uh, it just looks like a stealth black look, so we're probably going to build um, with some acrylic sheeting, uh, some memory uh, heat sinks, for those and uh, paint them nice and black maybe depending we'll see uh, i might just leave the nice aluminum look or something or brushed aluminum um especially since the uh, heat dissipation would be better if they're not painted so but yeah we'll uh, probably definitely make some heat sinks for those if they work here so yeah um if you do try to buy and use a um high density ram module in it it will just not boot and it will not work for you which is uh, a lot of trouble people trying to figure that um, the whole thing is is that some people figured out that some of these LGA 775 boards were actually capable of more than 4 gigabytes of DDR3 which a lot of companies at the time were advertising max 4 gigs with DDR3 or 8 gigs with DDR2 
Um, some people were saying, well, I want 8 gigs with DDR4, and some people figured out they were getting 8 gigabytes to work with DDR4 with low density RAM. A lot of people don't know anything about density of RAM, so they spread to other people saying that you can use 8 gigabytes, and then a lot of people are saying 8 gigs doesn't work because they um, pretty much most of any of the RAM they can get their hands on of regular type these days is all um, high density, so they don't pay attention to whether it's high or low density. They put it in, try to boot it, and they're, well, it doesn't work for me, I can't get it to work with 8 gigs of RAM, so it shouldn't work, blah, blah, blah. But, okay, and the conclusion is that it does work, but you need low density RAM. You can't just buy any random stuff off new egg amazon stuff like that so you gotta make sure it's low density and uh, i checked high and low and this is the only stuff i could find so uh, without further ado because i kind of dragged that on a bit let's plug her in and see if this stuff works i sure hope it does so this will be nice instead of the one two gig stick we'll have eight gigs of q8400 unfortunately this is just a cheap uh, dell motherboard so i can't overclock or anything can't even adjust the clocks of the memory. But I'm going to work on uh, getting another SLI, um, but for DDR3 now, so I'll get an N4790i motherboard uh, for this sooner than later. And uh, I did have a P45 N, P45 N T, I think, Deluxe ASUS motherboard that was a SLI for DDR2. But unfortunately, as I was cleaning it, I ended up screwing up the Northbridge chip by knocking off a small resistor that so yeah uh, sad times but i got up on my wall now as decoration to look at so yep anyway um we got everything all plugged in here we got our uh, keyboard here from first player thank you first player for sending that out I'll leave a link in the description below check out their uh, products on amazon new egg they got some nice gaming keyboards and mice and all that some other interesting products and power supplies case fans Okay, so that's ready. Let's get the power here. And then the power switch at the front. Alright, yay! There we go. Yep. The healthy beep. Starting windows. Looks like it's all good. We'll check her out here. Should have checked it out in the BIOS, but oh well. And I should have brought my mouse with me from the room. All right, there we go. Now we got our uh, first player, Fire Dancy Mouse here. Once again, thank you very much, first player, for helping sponsor the content here on Tef and Sec. Okay, so here we go. All right, installed system memory, eight gigabytes, Intel Core Two Quad, Q eighty four hundred. So there you go. There's the proof it does work, all right? So you can have a uh, LGA775 motherboard here run eight gigabytes of DDR3, even though the manufacturer says that's not supported. Just make sure it's low density. So I hope you learned uh, your lesson on low density memory today and hope you enjoyed watching the show. Uh, we'll check real quick before we go our CPU-Z to see what speed that is running at. I'm sure hoping it's working at 1333 because previously the 2 gig chip was having a problem only running at 1066 on this board. And unfortunately, I can't change any of those settings in BIOS. There's no custom BIOSes I can find either. Oh, no. 530 times 2, 1066. So it still doesn't want to go in 666. That sucks. Well, I can't wait to get that 790i motherboard so I can actually run it at 1033. Then we'll really see some better improvement. In the meantime, at least I got 8 gigabytes instead of 2. Well, once again, thank you very much for watching. Uh, make sure to check out Retro PC Gamers on Facebook at facebook.com slash Retro PC Gamers. Uh, also, be active. Become part of the community and the group on Facebook uh, with facebook.com slash group slash Retro PC Gamers. We also have a Discord, so check out our Facebook group and possibly our website, RetroPCGamers.com, for content on there uh, that would lead you, giving you a link to the Discord. So and we're also going to start getting more active on the YouTube and the we'll get, get Instagram going, use our Twitter more, and uh, I think we'll have to do the Reddit as well. So look forward to expanding into more of all those things soon. Um, check out our Quake 3 server, information on that at uh, the Facebook group. Just uh, search it up there. And uh, have a frag and happy day.